Thanks for joining us today. My name is Tim, known as Tim the Potter. I'm the owner of the Canton Clay Works here in the foothills of the Northwest Hills in Connecticut. Um, what I wanted to show you today was just some very basic uh, beginner approaches to throwing on the potter's wheel. First thing I'm doing is starting with a ball of clay, an electronic potter's wheel. This one is made by Bailey Ceramics in Kingston, New York. I really enjoy these wheels quite a bit. The theory when we throw in the potter's wheel is we have a motor that is controlled by a pedal. Down, I don't know if you can see the pedal on the floor. It's just like a sewing machine pedal. I push down with my toes to accelerate and I push down with my heel to decelerate. That controls the centrifugal force and the revolution of the wheel. I'm using water, a white stoneware, which is a very buttery smooth clay, and my hand. All we really are doing are creating a series of molds with our hands, highly lubricated with water and controlled the spinning and the velocity with the pedal. So that's the very basic, simple approach. The first thing I'm gonna do is to take a ball of clay and I'm gonna slam it onto the center of the wheel head. I'm gonna smear the outside shoulder into the wheel head and then I start with my molds, which are my hands. This is where it gets a little more complicated because when I teach my beginner classes, I have probably 20 different molds. The first mold I call the double-headed bird. I use this to cone the clay up. That is bringing the, the clay up vertically into a conical form. I bring it up with the double-headed bird hand position. Notice my hand is really not moving. It's just the palm and the heel of the hand is pushing in laterally at 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock and the clay either gets torn off the wheel head because I push too much or the clay moves vertically. As it moves vertically, I just compress the top of that conical form with my thumbs. Voila, that's all I need to do to cone up. Now I'm going to move this clay downward called coning down. The purpose of these hand positions is to get the clay into a position that we call centered. Centered means that we are taking all the millions of clay platelets that are in this lump of clay and we are forming them into a series of concentric circles. Now we're back to high school geometry. Concentric circles are a series of circles that share the same center point meaning all these clay platelets are in circles sharing the center axis, which is what allows us to make a symmetrical putt. As you notice, this foundation clay that I'm coning down is starting to get very buttery and smooth, and it's not doing the hula hoop thing. Now I go to a hand position I call cosmetic centering. I'm just taking the last 10% of the surface clay and getting it on center. I push firmly down on the top and on the outside wall at 7 o'clock to get this clay to be buttery, smooth, and uncentered. This is all about motor memory, so being successful at throwing pots, whether you're a beginner or an advanced person, is about repetition, impregnating our memory banks in our brain with the process of throwing which is all called motor memory. It's really no different than those of you who are an athlete or those of you who are a musician, where you are repeating your hand positions, holding the golf club, the lacrosse club, the racket, or the musical instrument. Now this is my foundation clay from which I now am going to open. I'm gonna create an opening in the middle, pull the clay outward, and then a hand position called pulling up where I'll pull the clay vertically. So this is the hand position I use to sink my tool or my right index finger downward at an angle and then I pull the clay open. There are many ways in which to throw a pot and this is a technique that I have developed through the years and I simply call it the logical potter. I'm just doing very simple, logical steps. Now, if you can see at the angle of that camera, the bottom of the pot is very irregular from my movement of my index finger. So the bottom of the pot is undulating slightly. I'm gonna take a tool called a rib, which has a flat edge, and I'm gonna compress the bottom of the pot 
at a 45 degree angle at the interior radius from the center point to the inside wall at 3 o'clock. High school geometry again. Push it down and now it is absolutely flat, buttery smooth and all the wet and excess clay gets trimmed off by the rib tool. Now this sort of looks like your cat food bowl. Big thick wall, low center of gravity. Now our job is to take this thick wall and pull it vertically. This is truly the most difficult hand position and function in throwing pots. But I can promise you when you take a beginner class and you give yourself time to come into the studio and practice, and you practice this motion, it may take you 50 times. It may take you 100 times of moving your hands in this position, but your brain will eventually memorize that function and it will come to you. We all work at a different pace, so some of us it happens for, it happens quite quickly, others it takes time. I was a slow learner many years ago. So, here's my foundation piece. I take my right index finger and I fold it. I'm using this center bone of the middle of the right index finger and I lay it down on the wheel head at five o'clock. I then take the left index finger and middle finger on the interior and then I connect the thumbs. Essentially, I've created a claw or a clamp. I love lobster and crab, so I always relate it to food. I pretend this is a lobster claw with the thick part of the claw here, the thin part of the claw here, grabbing the wall, squeezing it gently, and then literally pulling my hands vertically as I gently squeeze the clay. Do you notice the wall starts to elongate vertically? Then notice the rim is a bit thin thinner. The base is quite thick creating a trapezoid. When throwing in pottery, I really believe the trapezoid is your friend. So that trapezoid shape is what you're after. At first, now we're gonna take this thicker wedge of clay on the lower outside shoulder, move it in and pull it up. Notice how I'm squeezing it in, and now I'm gonna grab it, and I'm going to pull it up. You see that vertical motion. The reason this hand position is so delicate and difficult is that you need to learn as you pull vertically, you have to lighten up your pressure or taper your pressure because the clay wall up here is much uh, more pliable and fragile compared to the clay wall down here, which is thicker and denser. So down below, I use more pressure and I pull the clay up and right about here I lighten up my pressure and I pull a really beautiful buttery smooth cylindrical form and as I get to my rim I do a hand position called compressing my rim which tightens the clay platelets on the rim giving ourselves a pretty much almost a picture perfect cylindrical form. So that's the very first stage in beginner pottery. These cylindrical forms are the base of all of our forms in ceramics. We'll make mugs, bowls, casseroles, serving vessels, art pottery. So this is the very first lesson that I teach and I think you can give it a try and do it again and again and again and it will eventually come to you.